Well, good morning, okay. everybody. Welcome to Church in Ocean Park. My name is Louise Dobbs. I know all of you, so you know me. Today we're going to have a bit of fun. It's We're celebrating a Jewish holiday of Purim. It's a fun holiday. You're going to hear all about it in different ways. And we're all wearing silly hats if we want to. And because Purim is just a no-hold-barred Halloween-like thing. So I'm going to start with a song, and I'm going to put the lyrics in the chat. One more time, one more time, we have come here to sing together one more time. I'm going to do that a couple more times. One more time, one more Join the time. meeting. we have come. Walk a mile in my shoes, walk a mile in my shoes, before you throw the stone of judgment, walk a mile in my shoes, walk a mile in my shoes, walk a I'm the minister here at the church in Ocean Park. Um, and yes, it's firm, so we get to be a little wacky. When we're in person, we have hats and uh, noisemakers and everything at the door that people can grab. So if you have something and you want to stick it on your head or anything you want to do, uh, feel free. You're welcome here at the church in Ocean Park. If you have a hat on, if you don't have a hat on, you're welcome either way. You're welcome if you're Muslim, Hindu, Wiccan, Buddhist, Jewish, Christian, atheist, agnostic, spiritual, but not religious, some combination, all together. You're welcome if you love ritual or you do dislike it. You're welcome if you see the damage of organized religion or if you see the value of organized religion or if you don't want to hear about this at all. You're welcome if you just woke up, just came in, or just got out of jail. No matter where you were born, where you've been, or where you are this morning, you're welcome. You're welcome if you're gay, straight, transgender, non-binary, queer, or indescribable. You're welcome no matter your ability or your limitation. You're welcome if you're feeling down this morning, or if you're overflowing with gratitude, or you're a little bit of both. Welcome to the Church in Ocean Park. The Church in Ocean Park strives to be a horizontal organization we have a variety of leadership styles and we have times of sharing. That's one of the absolute beauties and the unique qualities of the church in Ocean Park. It helps the community stay alive and vibrant. Since we have different belief systems and different life experiences, there may be times that someone says something you disagree with. And as you hear them say that, remember that even though their perspective is important, yours is too. If a topic comes up you'd like to discuss more, let us know by writing in the chat with your email. I want to begin our time together this morning with a land acknowledgement. We, the people of the church in Ocean Park, recognize that our building in the church, Santa Monica sits on stolen land. To all of our relations, we, the settlers of this land, honor the Keech, the Tongva, and the Chumash peoples. We acknowledge the harms of genocide, enslavement, forced assimilation, gender violence, 
the destruction of sacred sites and the burial of historic truths about indigenous suffering at the hands of US colonial. We also acknowledge that our communities and country was built on the back of people who were stolen from Africa, placed into bondage and forced into labor. We acknowledge that we benefit from that labor that has never been repaid. In our acknowledgement, let us commit ourselves to healing by helping to create a more just and equitable world through the struggle of changing how we do things that we see as normal, but that are actually supporting the systems that oppress people. We apologize the harm by pledging ourselves to be a part of the culture of repair. Just take a moment in silence. Okay, amen. Okay, so Jeannie, I begin. I'm gonna start just by saying a little bit about Purim, uh, so you'll understand the song and you'll hear more uh, during the message. So uh, the Purim story is set in Persia around 479 BC during the reign of a ruthless king named, and I can't pronounce, either <laughs> Louise or I can pronounce his name, Ahavarash Ahasuerus, and his uh, Greek name was Xerxes. Anyway, uh, Queen Vashti, his queen disobeyed him in some way, and he got rid of her. He dethroned Queen Vashti, and then he had a, a countrywide competition to find a new queen. And Esther won this competition. Nobody knew that she was Jewish. So um, the king at the same time was promoting a man named Haman. He was very powerful. He was kind of like a prime minister, and everyone was ordered to bow down to Haman. But uh, Esther's cousin, Mordecai, refused to bow down. And this made Haman furious. So he, just, he sought to destroy the Jews um, after his run-in with Mordecai. And then Mordecai went to Esther and said, you know what, these are your people. You should appeal to the king. And she was nervous because she was Jewish and the king didn't know it. But she organized a party and had everybody there and Haman and the king were there. And then she exposed Haman in front of the king and said, these are my people, please save my people. And he decided that he was going to save the Jews and he condemned Haman to die in the very same gallows that he had built for the Jews. So it's a raucous party, it's a celebration. And uh, one of the parts of it is eating Haman Toshin, which are three cornered cookies that look like Haman's hat and you'll see a picture of those later on okay here we go louise oh once there was a wicked wicked man and haman was his name sir he lied and lied about the jews though they were not to blame sir oh today will merry merry be oh today will merry merry be Oh, today we'll merry, merry be and not some home and tushin. And Esther was the lovely queen of King Ahasuerus. Oos, when Haman said he'd squelch us all, oh my, how he did scare us. Oh, today we'll merry, merry be. Oh, today we'll merry, merry be. Oh, today we'll merry, merry be. And not some hum and toshin. And Mordecai, her cousin bold, said, What a dreadful villain. If we don't act at once, my dear, our life's not worth a shilling. Oh, today we'll merry, merry be. Oh, today we'll merry, merry be. Oh, today we'll merry, merry be. And not some hum and toshin. When Esther, speaking to the king of Haman's plot, made mention, Ha ha, said he, oh, he, no, he won't, I'll spoil his bad intention. Oh, today will merry, merry be, oh, today will merry, merry be, oh, today will merry, merry be, and not some harm and tarshin. And so my Fred came to an end, this clever Mr. Smarty, for he became a wiser man at Esther's little party. Oh, today will merry, merry be. Oh, today will merry, merry be. Oh, today will merry, merry be. And wash some home and toshin. All right, thanks for putting up, I mean, listening to that. <laughs> 
coming up with it. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is the message today is being brought by uh, Kim and Rabbi Klingler in a video where Kim asks, tell us about Purim, and it, it's a little longer than, you know, usual messages are, so let's go to that video now, and I'm going to share that with you. Okay, so Purim is the um, upside down day, the Mardi Gras, the Halloween, the, it's, it is the raucous, have a great time, wear a costume, make a lot of noise, break the rules. It's like, I think every, um, every culture needs to have a holiday that's about letting off steam, abandoning pretense, you know, not being, not trying to be holy. You know, Purim is not a serious day. It is a raucous, satirical, also, drinking is permitted and even encouraged on Purim in the Jewish tradition uh, and other forms of consciousness altering, too, if that's your thing. Um, but you can also get very high on life without drugs, which is my thing, So, because I like to have a good time. So Purim is a great holiday. And uh, I can tell you more about it, but I need to, yeah, what's the, the I, I, but I need to set the tone oh, because that the tone. Be, yes. be, be, because religion, you know, religion is is serious. It's holy. It's you know all that stuff. And the Jewish holidays, when you look through the entire cycle, are profound. But Purim is also profound in that it celebrates letting go, you know, release, levity, having fun. And um, if you don't understand that, you're off on the wrong foot, is what I wanted to explain. Okay. So the, the book of the Bible that's associated with Purim, that actually establishes Purim as a holiday, is the book of Esther. It says in the book of Esther that when the wicked Haman, who, which we'll talk about, when you read this, there's no separating the story of Esther and the book of Esther from how it's enacted on Purim, which I'll get to. Because I know that in the many Christian traditions, the story of Esther is taken as a, in a much more serious way. Um, and not in the Jewish tradition. The book is a farce. When you read it on its own terms, it's an incredibly beautifully constructed farce on palace life, on wealth and on power on men trying to oppress women, on the Gentiles trying to oppress the Jews, and tables turn and there's, you know, turnabout is fair play, and there is like pictures slamming doors and people going through on different parts of the set, you know, and, um, and it says that when the wicked Prime Minister Haman, who is the oh. enemy of the Jews, <laughs> who again, when we read the story in synagogue, where we try to drown out his name with noisemakers and shouting and booing. Um, as I said, a chance to release. Uh, I don't know what everybody's politics are, but uh, Trump made a very good Heyman, uh, actually a very good King Ahasuerus during the, when he was president, mm. uh, because we'll get into that in a minute, because there's also a tradition of writing contemporary satires based on the Perm story called the Perm Spiel which ha has started in the Middle Ages and happens every year in Jewish communities everywhere, where you kind of do a, you do a satire mm -hmm. that's loosely connected to the story. It's a lot of fun. So I was saying that um, in the story of Esther, in order to choose a day when he's going to destroy all the Jews, the wicked Prime Minister Haman, um, yeah, you boo and boo, uh, cast lots through dice to determine the day. Lots in Hebrew, the word to cast a, a, a lot is Purim. So Purim means lots or a game of chance. And so that's where the name comes from. Now this goes very deep because the book of Esther, now in the story, which you may or may not be familiar with, Queen Esther, is, well, here's, here's the overview. 
King Ahasuerus, the king of Persia, throws a giant party to show off his wealth and then insists that his queen, Vashti, come dance before the people, all the guys. And Vashti refuses. And the king is infuriated and banishes her. And his advisors gather and send out a letter to all over the kingdom saying, women will obey their husbands. Uh, I kid you not, it's like, <laughs> and, uh, and, but then the king's lonely. And so he has a beauty contest mm. to choose the next queen. Now, really, you can't get too serious about this story, in my opinion, mm. even though it's got all the, it's, it's, it's everything about a good story. The oppressive powers that be, the underdogs winning, you know, all that stuff. But whereas when we do the Passover story a month from now, it's the same dynamic mm. of the oppressed being liberated and rescued and saved. Whereas on Passover, we do it with great um, seriousness, mm -hmm. um, the most serious of intent. On Purim, we do it and we yeah. blow our nose, you know, at the, at the bad guys. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's really crucial, again, that a, a, a people, a culture, a community have the opportunity to express both sides, our awe and gratitude, and our, you know, up yours big guy, mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in a ritualized way, so that it's contained. It's not, it's not spilling out into the rest of our lives, but there's a place for it. I, I love Purim. So in the story, there's a beauty contest, and Mordechai, who's a Jew, has a niece named Esther, who he says, why don't you go into this beauty contest? Who knows? This could be important, but don't tell him you're a Jew. She goes, she wins the contest, she wins the king's heart, and she becomes the queen. And nobody knows she's a Jew. Meanwhile, the wicked prime minister, Haman, and this is important, Haman is a descendant of a tribe called Amalek. In the book of Exodus and elsewhere in the, in the Torah, you will read that Amalek is Israel's sworn enemy. Mm. And Amalek has, is, is considered in the Jewish tradition to be the metaphor and embodiment of pure evil. Mm. Pure evil being. It says, remember what Amalek did to you on your, when you were journeying through the wilderness, how they attacked you from the rear and took out the weak and the helpless with no fear of God. They had no fear of God. You shall blot out the memory of Amalek from the world. So Amalek, which originally was perhaps some Near Eastern tribe, in the Jewish tradition becomes the metaphor for unhinged evil in uh, the Jewish tradition. And the definition of unhinged evil in the Jewish tradition is that you have no reverence for the creation and no compunction about taking out those who are weaker than you. This, of course, goes across the Jewish tradition, and I'm not saying exclusively to, I mean, Jesus is a great example of uh, someone who, who, um, uh, who championed the, 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 the powerless. Yeah, yes. um, he did that as a Jew, of course, mm -hmm. uh, following the Jewish tradition, which is that the creator, God, I am that I am, opposes tyranny. Right, and the and and that's sort of that's the that's our mission statement. If we're with right, this but God, I heard the cries of my people. And I, I feel their pain. Their go yeah. to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. Okay, so in so Pharaoh is an embodiment of disconnection from the from the source of heart, hardened heart, uh, and Amalek is also occupies that place in Jewish cultural language. So at the beginning of Esther, 
uh, Haman is identified as a descendant of Amalek. Damn it. Ooh. I, I, yeah, I can't hear his name without doing it. You have it. to say, right, that's right. And Mordechai is identified as a descendant of King Saul, who does battle with Amalek in the book of Kings. Okay. But the battle's not over yet. The book of Esther is almost like a um, fantasy ending to the the centuries of um, the millennia of trying to fight against this force in humanity, which is when we get disconnected from our moral center. Okay, okay. And so there are those serious undertones to the story, but the story itself and the holiday itself are done with levity. That makes and, and that makes sense, right? And, and raucous noise, songs, you know, um, costumes. Which one of the reasons, you know, Purim in Israel, where I am, while while you're listening to this, Purim is Halloween in Israel ah. because secular culture, just like our secular culture in the states, mm -hmm. you know, it takes a holiday, All Hallows Eve, and it becomes a, a culture-wide masquerade day. Purim does the same in Israel and you will see costume displays and you know, all kind in every supermarket in Israel. Wow, um, I've seen parades sometimes. Oh, there are big parades mm. in Israel. There's a lot, it's, it is the national blow off steam holiday. And the best analogy I can think of is, is Mardi Gras. And they're actually seem to be related because, you know, in Europe, the Jews and the Christians lived all, in, all enmeshed with each other's uh, communities. And I, I think, um, and Purim generally falls during Lent, mm -hmm. you know. Towards the beginning-ish, yeah. Well, actually towards the beginning of Lent. Yes. It always does because Easter always coordinates with Passover. So, um, so it's during Lent, towards the beginning of Lent. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the Jews may have borrowed the carnival atmosphere from Mardi Gras and also the masquerade and adopt, adapted that into their own holiday because we're always taking the good stuff from each do. other. You know, that's what we do. <laughs> and um, so I think there's a lot of Purim that has a Mardi Gras quality to it also because masks are a big thing on her. Now, what would you say that- you Well, I think I need- of, Well, I was gonna say for contemporary people, because mm -hmm. you and I could talk for the next hour, but you know- Yeah, I, I know, I hope I'm not going on too long. <laughs> As Trevor Noah would say, ain't got time for all that. But right. yeah, so what would you say for, so for contemporary people, because you know, for, for this church service, we're gonna read some of the Megillah and we're gonna make some noise. Some people may have costumes, you know, we're, it's gonna just be a great time. Good, good, good. And what should we be thinking about in, you know, as contemporary people celebrating this and letting off steam, of course, and we surely need to. Right, yeah. so the main thing is to give yourself permission to be politically incorrect for one service. Okay. You, you know, to boo at the people, at the bad guys, to cheer for the good guys, mm -hmm. that part is like the baseline. However, there is, of course, a lot of really profound commentary on the more spiritual and mystical level about what we're doing besides blowing off steam. Okay. And that has to do, number one, the Book of Esther, I'll, I'll, make a, I'll make a bunch of notes here. The Book of Esther is the only book in the Hebrew Bible, in the Tanakh, that never mentions the name of God. Mm. Not once. Mm. Obviously, the rabbinic commentators don't miss this. It's like, why is God absent from the book of Esther? And the teaching then goes in this direction. Esther, the name Esther, has two different meanings. One is that it's the name Ishtar, the chief goddess of the Persian. Oh my gosh. Uh huh. Yeah, this is a satire. They're giving Ishtar's name to the Jewish heroine in the story. Wow. Right? 
And Mordechai, her uncle, is Marduk, who was the chief god of the pantheon of the Persians. So, so with our history hats on, mm -hmm. which you have to do to really understand stuff. Um, yeah, these texts and whatnot, yes. Right. You have to, it, then uh, you understand that in its time, mm -hmm. this was filled with illusions and, and like, imagine calling you the heroine after the chief goddess of the pantheon. You know, it's like, it's, it's, an, it's an, really, that's just a start. I, I could talk about it for hours. However, in the commentaries, Esther in Hebrew means I will hide. I will hide. Mm -hmm. And Esther conceals her identity, but God is also concealed in the story. Where is God in the book of Esther? Because even its name, Purim, means chance. So whereas in the rest of the Hebrew Bible, you're talking about God's hand, God controlling history, God, on Purim you say, well, what, maybe not? Uh, or where is God? Or do things just happen with a roll of the dice? Where do we, and all of these deep questions are sort of roiling around there and are worth bringing to the surface um, without an answer necessarily. Um, because wherever God's presence is, when you read the book of Esther, it's Esther's bravery that saves the day. Right. Esther is a true heroine. And so was God directing things or was this one of those moments more in the key serious moment in the book? Mordechai, can, Haman has persuaded the king to put out a decree to kill all the Jews mm. on, on the date that this is on the Hebrew date, the 14th of Adar. Mm. That's why Purim is on this date. Um, and Mordechai says to Esther in the note, sends her note, says, look, Esther, you're going to have to go to Ahasuerus, the king, and tell him you're a Jew. Mm. And ask him to reverse his decree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, we don't know what's going to happen. This may have been the moment you were born for. Right, for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Esther says, okay, uncle, if I die, I die. Mm. And I get the chills when I ever get to that part. Yeah, because she is truly heroic mm -hmm. and courageous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she turns the tables on Haman with her bravery. The king loves her. So when she reveals her identity as a Jew, he says, I can't let Haman do this. And the gallows that Haman had erected for Mordechai as the leader of the Jewish community, he's hung on that gallows. Wow. So the deep question of Purim is, is God present? If not, we have to act as if. Or else it ain't ever going to happen. Wow. Right? Okay. And so that's, so Esther's holding that deep thing in it. There's another even, if I have more time, do I have some more time? A little bit, you got the, like you, got a, okay. you got something else deep that, oh my gosh. Yeah, because yeah, it goes deeper, because in the mystical tradition, in the Talmud, it says, you should get so plastered on Purim. I'm quoting the Talmud. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, this is not a modern, we are, do, Purim's been this quality of holiday since its inception. Of, of sort of raucousness. Right. How, lo how long ago? Um, uh, third century BC, okay. something like that. Um, it, you should get so plastered on Purim that you can't tell the difference hmm. between blessed is Mordechai and cursed is Haman. Wow. <laughs> so then the mystical tradition says, what does it mean? to get to a level beyond good and evil, beyond curses and blessing. And so I think for them, you know, for some people getting drunk is a way to 
move beyond duality, right? It's a, it's a way to become ecstatic. It's a way to um, uh, leave, to rise above experience and just the experience of, 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 uh, of, of the binary experience of, you know, me and you and all the separateness. And so in the Jewish mystical tradition in Kabbalah, Purim is a very high holiday because you're supposed to ascend in your consciousness to a place beyond distinctions of good and evil. And Purim, and, and Purim gets compared to Yom Kippurim, Yom Kippur, in just a pun, this is just a, a word play, mm -hmm. where on Yom Kippur, we rise above life by fasting and denying ourselves and reach that point of a connection to everything. And on Purim, we rise above it all by through levity and raucousness and leaving the rules behind, but that both holidays have this incredibly holy and elevated um, destination. Whereas, which is a moment when, oh, all the distinctions and the rules and the, all the stuff that makes that makes living living it's not bad but you need if you're going to be a spirit have on a spiritual path you need to occasionally go up to the mountaintop and just look at everything and see it all without judgment and without uh i don't know how to say it better yeah yeah but yes to be able to, to rise above this and well I so think the, that is where we'll be yeah. That's right. The goal of the raucousness mm -hmm. is not just to be raucous. It's to, in the way, as I think about, a, say, a great Mardi Gras parade, you know, to leave, leave the struggle behind for a little bit mm. and be refreshed by that. Mm -hmm. And then come back to the hard work of living, you know? There you go. We indeed have a lot of hard work to do. <laughs> we sure do. Uh -huh. Thanks so much, Rabbi Jonathan Kligler. Thank you. I want to, uh, in their absence, I want to thank Rabbi Jonathan and I want to, and Dr. Kim for that amazing message. I don't know about you all, but uh, I learned quite a bit and I can't not wait until we get back in our building and we can actually do this the right way. <laughs> um, and because we know how to do this, uh, but it's very difficult on a Zoom call. So, um, but we know that it's necessary and we will be in our building um, be way before next program. So uh, we will be able to party and uh, do Purim like Purim is supposed to be done. So anyway, I appreciate all that I've learned. Um, this is community sharing time. You see how we mixed it up because it is Purim. So, um, we can do whatever the heck we want, right? That's what we're doing. So if you have a uh, something you'd like to say or you'd like to ask uh, people who are not here, feel free to do that and we'll just throw it up and see if they answer. It's per them, they might. So uh, Gene? And Jerry had his hand up. So Jerry, why don't you? Growing up, I, I remember all that, eating the humintosh and I love that filled with apricot or pruny. You get it at one of the delis here. I, I love that stuff can't find it really good like you used to back east though mm. and as far as the hats I didn't even know about the hats I just put it on <laughs> and then all of a sudden I see everybody have hats this is this is not my funny hat it's my only hat my best hat <laughs> so I don't know but this Indiana is not my Jones hat. sorry but um I think the uh, noisemakers, when you hear the word Heyman, were called groggers. And you used to twirl them around and they yeah. made a lot of noise. You know, I, I never thought of Purim as a, uh, you know, a, a, jo a joking holiday. I always thought that it was serious in some ways. So it was good to learn this. But so I guess it's on Tuesday. But the interesting part about is the repression of women. And the, the next day is the International Women's Day. You know, so I think that those two combined together make some uh, some statement. Anyhow, that's it. That's true. Thank you, Jerry. Um, Jean? This was fantastic, finding out all that information. He's a very good speaker. 
I loved finding out the meaning of the word Purim. I've never known that it means chance. Yeah. Giving a chance, throwing lots. Uh, that's fascinating. So I, I picked up on his uh, topic of his theme of masks. And I was thinking about it while he was talking. And I think we all like putting a mask on because you get to drop being yourself for a while. You know, we can we can be proud of ourselves, but sometimes we just want to be somebody else mm -hmm. or something else. And um, I remember when I was in junior high, it wasn't called middle school yet, but but I was very shy and plump and always got teased about the fact that I was smart. And, um, you know, the kids that didn't study very much didn't like me because I got good grades and the teachers like me, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, I was slated to go to high school at a school where I only knew about three or four friends were going because everything was changing in Pasadena. Everybody was, the busing was happening there and I had been bused. And now I was in a new place. I was going to go to a new high school. I took the opportunity to kind of put a figurative mask on and be a different person because I had watched at my junior high school, I had watched Sherry Dyer to this day. I remember her name. She was the nicest person and very popular, pretty and kind of uh, kind to everyone. And she spoke up too, which I didn't do very much. So when I went to high school, I took on some of her characteristics, but nobody knew it because they were all new people. <laughs> and that was a very freeing experience for me. And I think that's a little bit like putting on a mask and being somebody else. I, I enjoyed this uh, this service. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks, Jean. Okay, Joseph? Yes, it was very, um, very interesting and enlightening to me as well. It's the first time I've really heard, you know, the festival described in this way. And it was very interesting. Um, it is similar to our carnival too. You know, what we have the costumes and the and the different um, things that it's a sort of satire. The calypsos that we sing is a sort of satire, you know, in reflection of what we, our ancestors went through in the past, how they were victimized and enslaved. And so this is a sort of releasing of all the tension and the, and the stress of, of living. So it's very similar, very similar to the poem. And, and then Esther meaning, I will hide. So I think God really, God is really there in our jubilations and in our enjoyment. God hides, quote unquote, in it. The book I'm writing now is entitled, And God Laughs. So God is present in the laughter and in the enjoyment of, the, of that Jewish festival. He's not mentioned by name, but in the laughter, in the in the satire, you know, in in the in the plot, God is working His purposes out, and so you know, it's very interesting. <laughs> right. Thank you, uh, Louise. Oh, and then, and then Fred. I see you, Fred. Go ahead, Louise. Yes. Well. Um... I love this, the idea of this raucous, no holds barred, because I like to have fun and humor is a big part of my life. I mean, I get through the hard parts by kind of laughing at myself and not taking everything so seriously. And it's, I think it's really good. I mean, maybe I've gone overboard because I like fun all the time, but <laughs> so, um, Thank you. That's why we have so many, we celebrate a lot of different holidays so we can do it more often. Thank you. Okay, Fred and then Gail. Fred. Um, in Europe, in a lot of uh, Germany and Switzerland and parts of France, they have Fasching. And it, it's a, a all day celebration and there's special party trains that leave early in the morning to cities that have parades all day long and you follow the parades and they break off into different parts of the city and they always make stops off at bars and taverns uh -huh. <laughs> soup of a special soup holiday soup and beer it lasts all day long i got on a train the first time my first year and i 
was on this party train at eight in the morning and I ended up sitting between two old women and I thought, oh, I'm on a party train. I'm stuck between two old ladies. <laughs> and this one, this woman pulls out a bottle of vodka and <laughs> pops and hands me a cup of vodka eight in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> And that's how my first fossing started. <laughs> but the second year I went to um, Salzburg, Salzburg in Switzerland, and we spent all night long following parades and stopping off at bars. It was a the big celebration before the seriousness of Lent. And my second part of the story is I worked for a good part of a school year at a Jewish school on Beverly Boulevard as an LAUSD resource teacher. And that's my first Purim celebration. Uh, I got to know Purim and the kids handed out candy and everything went wild for a whole day mm. at the school. They let the kids just run wild and party. And uh, it, it, was, it was very interesting year because I learned a lot of different things. I had to report to the rabbi who was the principal every once a week. It was a good relationship. And Purim came up and, and every, the kids were all excited getting their masks and, and their costumes ready and everything else. And, and they explained everything to me for the, for that, about that day. Wow. That's great. Thank you. Great sharing, Fred. Uh, Gail? I forget what I was, how I was going to start, but hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very serious person in a lot of ways. I mean, you, you ask people, I, I love having these serious conversations. I think deeply, I think deeply about things. Um, but I also really believe, I'm just so strongly believe in this kind of letting loose and being silly. <clears throat> Maybe that has to do with being an early childhood educator for so many years. And you've seen the delight and the joy and the health when children are, are able to do that. Anyway, my story is, most of you know my mother passed away when I was nine from can cancer, five years of cancer. And, you know, it's not something you joke about, parental, you know, early parental death. Trust me, I <laughs> people don't, people can't go there, most people. But when you're in a group or, it's, you know, usually it's a very small group of mother, what I call motherless daughters, people who have lost their parent early, we make dead mother jokes. And I find that so healthy and so <laughs> healthy. And it's like, thank God I can, you know, because it's so heavy. You know, it's not something I would do in a regular group of people because it, people can't handle it. Um, and you know, good. But I mean, some people can handle it, thank God. But my sister and I used to do this all the time. You know, we just make jokes about it. Oh, it's Mother's Day's coming. Oh, I forgot she's dead. You know. <laughs> anyway, I I just think that it's so important to be able to go to that place to allow yourself to be released. Mm. Yeah. So if I come in with a dead mother joke, please forgive me. If you're <laughs> offended. <laughs> it's not meant to be offending. It's actually done in very deep love. Is the rabbi? The rabbi's not there though, huh? Because it's recorded. Right. He's not here. Oh, that's okay. I I guess I don't know that nobody's gonna know the answer because <laughs> I found it interesting that uh when when they, he was looking for a bride, he he created a, uh, a beauty contest to find a bride. And I just wanted to talk to the rabbi about that, but now I realize he's not there. Do you happen to know what, I mean, he was just wanted a beautiful woman, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, it was pretty surface. But I think- Yeah, it, I thought so. <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty- but it, it sounded just like, for, for one thing, he couldn't believe that everybody left. Like, it's kind of flabbergasted. And then, uh, you know, just was showing that how surface the guy is, you know. And I think part of the satire, too, about 
making a, a statement about this is what they do. But any, um, I want Gail. I wanted to say that um, mortician sure. and people that work in, um, you know, with, uh, yeah, morticians, they make jokes all, all the time. And uh, when I was first a pastor, I was a little taken aback because sometimes you ride in the same car with them, you know. But they, that's how they get through their work. Yeah, yeah. You have to find a way. Yeah, and it, it actually helps then to be able to go into the deep sadness. Right. Right. So that's what they. Oh. Yeah. yeah thank you. Okay, Linda. Thanks. Um, well, I was thinking. This wasn't what I was going to say, but but uh, I was thinking about what Gail said. That I remember my the year my dad died, and he died in June. I remember by Thanksgiving. We were all sitting around and we started telling jokes about my dad. Like, do you remember the time Gil did that kind of jokes? Um, and that that was a part of healing, right? That ability from, from June to Thanksgiving for us to finally be able to, to talk about, you know, mm -hmm. to remember all the, you know, because there's always something funny that people did. Yeah. But, you know, even my dad, maybe particularly my dad, but, um, you know, and that it took us, and that that was, that that was a process of being able to, to laugh. Mm. Um, what I was actually going to say was I was going to thank um, Jerry um, for the, for talking about um, International Working Women's Day. And, and I was thinking about Esther, right? And about women who have, taken the most courageous actions. I mean, the courage of Esther is no joke. <laughs> you yeah. know, I mean, that's some serious stuff. And so I just want to, you know, when I, mean, I was thinking, you know, if I was going to get a costume, I would want to dress up like Esther. Bonnie. Oh, hi, Bonnie. Sorry. Oh, there you okay. Go. Let me just, as long as we're willing to be silly regarding death, after my mom died, I was talking to my sister about her her body being cremated, my sister said, well, mom finally made an ash out of herself. Oh, <laughs> and then I told that to the mortuary mm. guy, and he said, oh, I haven't heard that before, and he got a good laugh. And I said, I know you've heard this a million times, but I've got to say it. People are simply dying to see you. <laughs> and he said... She put on a deep voice and says, yes, but we keep it underground. <laughs> <laughs> so just silly time. And then as long as I've got the floor, if you will, I can relate to the need to be silly and to laugh. It's just helps keep me afloat. Yeah. And it's easy for Bonnie to go into complainitude, worry, blah, blah, blah. There's been lots going on around here. And then to be able to laugh and joke and then get on myself about my own seriousness. Petty little issues compared to a lot of people in this world. And then just to be able to move forward and have a good laugh and <laughs> listen to jokes if need be or read jokes if need be and lighten up the life and keep going. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank I you. I could Kathy. use some lift up this week, you guys, myself and my neighbor. So appreciate okay. it. All, All right. right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'll mute myself. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Some of you will remember we actually we have had crazy hat day at the church in Ocean Park. Um, actually, it was instigated by uh, the group Kick Ass Drinking but Volunteer Benefactor Society, if you all remember in any back mm -hmm. in the day. Um, so we made crazy hats and worm just for doing that. So you don't have to have perm. You don't have to wait for next perm. We could do it way earlier than that. Um, and we're a little bit crazy on fancy dress swim days sometimes. So, okay. <laughs> yes. So anyway, thank you all for sharing. Uh, it's it, it's been a, a educational morning and also a fun morning so far. And we're going to continue with Louise. Yes, we're going to continue. We have another video that um, Kim sent me, and I think it's good. And thank you, Jerry, for telling us what grogger means, one of those shakers. 
And this video, uh, I'm going to share it now. Purim time is upon us. We'll be singing some crazy tunes. Yes, everything's topsy turvy. I mean, we eat cookies filled with prune. <laughs> shake, shake, shake your grugger. Shake your grugger right. Shake, shake, shake your grugger. Check it all in time. Work, 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 you dragon. Work your dragon right. Work, 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 you dragon. Work it all in time. Well, there was a guy named Haman. He tried to kill off the Jews. But thankfully, brave Esther saved us. She knew what to do with no time to lose. She jumped in the line. Put to mass on drinks. Okay, I'm ready. You jump in the line. Everything will be fine. Okay, I'm ready. Jump in the line. Put your mask on drinks. Okay. Shake your gravel right. Shake, shake, shake your gravel. Shake it all in time. Work, work, work your gravel. Work your gravel right. Work, work, work your gravel. Work it all in time. Everyone's dressed up in costumes. We march around in parades. Cause us Jews, if you give us lemons, we'll make a lemonade. Jump in the line. Put your mask on. Do something. Okay. I believe you. Jump in the line. Everything will be fine. Okay. Shake your brother right. Shake, shake, shake your brother. Shake it all in time. Work, work, work your brother. Work your brother right. Work, work, work your brother. Work it all in time. The moral of this Megilla is stand up for what you feel. And if you try to kill us, we'll boo out your name and make a fool and scream. Put your mask on, okay. I believe you. Jump in the line. Everything will be fine. Okay. Put your mask on, drink some okay. hay. I believe you. Jump in the line. Everything will be fine. Okay. I believe hey. you. Shake, shake, shake your brother. Shake your brother. Work it all in time. Dance, dance, dance the horror. Dance it all in time. Work, work, work your brother. Work it all in time. Hey, jump in the line. Put your mask on, drink some Okay, hay. I believe you. Jump in the line. Everything will be fine. Okay, I believe hey. you. Jump in the line. Put your mask on, drink some Okay, hay. I believe you. Jump in the line. Everything will be fine. Okay. Shake your brother right. Shake, shake, shake your brother. Shake it all in time. Work, work, work your brother. Work your brother right. Work, work, work your brother. Work it all in time.
Beautiful. We're singing along over here. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you, Jean. I see one birthday, Hurley Jim, Tuesday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Hi, Molly. Happy birthday, Hurley Jim. You look so cool in those shades. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Wow, that's great. We sure do love you. That's Hurley Jim's version of the birthday song. It ends like that. dancing in our spirit i knew i knew bonnie was that dancing right there <laughs> uh, so unmute yourself and we will say together carry on as we hold hands across the land but before you do that if you'd like to come to communion just stay on for a while we'll be on we'll be having a short communion service in about five minutes after the service so spread your wings and hold hands with one another and say together, carry, carry on, one, two, three, carry, carry on. on. Yes. Bye. Bye.